Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another session of PowerDirector Made Simple. There are a few features in PowerDirector that, to my knowledge, people tend to either never use them at all, or at best, only for demonstration purposes, such as in this tutorial. In my opinion, one of those features is the AI Style plugin that was added to PowerDirector about six or seven years ago. Some of you probably are thinking right now, what is the AI Style plugin? I must have missed seeing that or have no idea where it is. Well, if the AI Style plugin does not appear on your version of PowerDirector, then you need to download at least one of the four different stylized packs coming through Cyberlink Application Manager, or CAM for short. Now, each pack contains the plugin itself and 10 different styles that you can apply to your videos. We're going to try and create a video that Cyberlink describes as living works of art. I'll start with one of the sample media video clips, Skateboard 02, and drag it down to track one on the timeline. I'm also going to drag down to track one an image travel 02. Now that one is just a JPEG image. We don't need to hear the music on these, so I'm going to disable the audio track for now. I'm going to select the first clip and then click on the blue edit button. Along the left side at the bottom, you should see the AI plugin tool. If I hover the mouse on it, an information circle appears, and when clicked, it says, Transform your videos into living works of art. There's also a Cyberlink tutorial that you can watch for more details, which will open a YouTube video in your browser. The music on it is a little annoying, so I'm going to turn it down while I let this play. I've added my own music background here to avoid any copyright conflict with Cyberlink. All of the text at the bottom was added by Cyberlink. This method of opening the plugin is no longer used, and they are actually showing a much outdated version of PowerDirector. Although it says on the bottom that you can purchase the packs, they are free to 365 subscribers by using CAM. Notice the use of the play button. That has changed and I'll discuss it in a minute. Pay attention to what Cyberlink is doing here. The original clip is placed on track one, and the new, shorter, artistic clip is placed underneath it on track two. You should have noticed a few problems with Cyberlink's video. First, it is a six-year-old video, and they are showing the AI plug-in being run on a very old version of PowerDirector. The current implementation of the plugin has changed somewhat, but the ultimate outcome remains the same. And if you paid very close attention to the timeline in the video, after they created the artistic video, they placed the original video on track one to start out unmodified, and then after a few seconds, the artistic video, which they placed on track two, took over showing how the original scenery changed to the artistic form. I'm going to attempt to do something very similar to that. Wish me luck. So let's start the plugin by clicking on the tool on the left side. The AI plugin window opens, which is nearly identical to what we saw in the six-year-old video. In my preview window, the skateboard video that I selected is showing. There are four style packages shown on the left. Monet, Impressionist, Van Gogh, and Chinese Traditional. 
I'll start by clicking on a few from the Monet collection and the preview window changes to show the effect. Now contrary to what some other YouTube videos may say, the plugin has not been applied to the entire clip, but only to one frame. Notice that the play button is grayed out. I can move the playhead one frame at a time or to a different location and then that one frame is transformed. I'll move to the Impressionist pack where you can see quite a contrast in styles. And next is the Van Gogh pack with more changes in style. And finally is the Chinese traditional style. Now here's a little trick that very few people know about. Remember in the Cyberlink video, they were able to hit the play button and watch the effect? But now the play button is grayed out. Here is how that can be done in the latest versions of PowerDirector. Notice down at the bottom on the left, it shows my source clip, which is the sample clip of the skateboard. I'm going to hit the trash can icon to delete the reference to the file name. And immediately, nothing appears in the preview window. But wait, there's more. Now, I'll click on any of the styles and watch and see what happens in the preview window. Whoa, where did that image come from? And now, I can hit the play button. I'll click on a different style and hit play again. It seems Cyberlink does include a built-in video sample for each style, but in order to get to the AI style plugin window, you have to first select the video in your media library. This is another change to the current version compared to what Cyberlink shows in the video. So let's get the skateboard video back in the preview window. I'll click on add a video icon at the bottom and select to add one from my media library. I'll choose skateboard 02 and click on OK. I'll move back to the Van Gogh pack and select the Starry Night which is the same style used in Cyberlink's video. Once again, because the source video is not one of the plugin's built-in samples, the play button is grayed out again. Now here is one overlooked setting right at the bottom of step two in which I can keep the original color. Watch the preview window where the skateboard scene changes from the predominant blues from the Van Gogh Starry Night painting to its original color scheme. I could stick with the original colors, but Van Gogh's certainly have a lot more color, so I'm going to go with that. Moving over to step three, I'm going to move the yellow range flags to about the two second position. And the ending one at the six second position. which means I only want about four seconds of this stylized video. Moving on to step four is the actual transformation process. If your graphics processor is capable, the hardware acceleration should already be checked for you. If you turn it off, it just means that it'll take longer to re-render. The process is very intensive and may take some time depending upon the power of your computer, especially if your video clip is long. I'll click on the Transform Video button and a window opens to tell me that a new file will be created in the media library. I'll click OK to continue. When the process is complete, the AI style plugin window closes. Now look up at the media library and there is the new entry of that four second stylized clip 
and that the original 10 second clip remains on the timeline. I'm going to select that stylized 4 second clip from the media library and move it down to track 2 so that it starts at around the 2 second mark. And I'm also going to disable the audio on track 2. Now, when you look at the timeline, you might be wondering, just what the heck is this guy doing here? Well, think back in the Cyberlink video, they did the same thing. The resultant view will start out with two seconds of unchanged video, then switch over to show what four seconds of a living work of art might look like, followed by four seconds of the unaltered video. I'm going to hit play and let's watch my Renaissance artistic skills show off for the whole world to see. Well, what's the verdict? Yes, it's neat looking and amazing what AI can do, but for me, the big question is, when would you ever want to do this in a video? And another thing, if you haven't noticed, this plugin only works on videos, not on still images. But wait, there's more. My devious mind knows a method of making this work on a still image. Now you know why I have that image already there on track one. I'm just going to make a very short video clip using nothing but that image. And then the plugin will work happily on that clip. So with the image clip selected on the timeline, I'll just hit X to bring up the range flags. They automatically set for the entire clip. And so now I can hit export or export range. I'll give it a name of travel02 underscore one. And then I'll make sure that I'm in the correct folder for this project. Everything else is correct, so I'll hit export. Well, that only took a few seconds, and I'm back at the main editing window where I'll click on the X to remove the range flags. Now, some of you may or may not know, but this option to have exported videos automatically added to the media library was recently removed by Cyberlink. That means I have to manually locate it and import it into the library. I don't know why they removed it. I don't like it. But for now, I'm just going to have to click on import a media file and locate my new video and then click open. And there appears my new video which looks identical to the still image. I'm going to drag it down to track one just to the right of the image. If I hit play, we should see the original image for five seconds followed by five seconds of the new image which looks identical. Now the AI style plugin should be fat, dumb, and happy to work on my new video. I'm going to select that new video, then click Edit, and then AI Style Plugin. This time I'm going to open the Impressionist Pack and select Painting 1. I like the new colors, so now I'm going to click on Transform Video. After a few seconds, the new art video appears in both the media library and it replaced the video on the timeline. If I play the new art video, it's just showing the same image on every frame, but this time with some real color and some artistic style added to it. I still don't have just a single image as I promised you, but wait, there's still a little more. With the playhead anywhere over the new art video, I'll click on the little camera icon in the preview window to take a snapshot. I'll save it to the same project folder and just keep the name of Snapshot and then click on Save. 
Now I'm going to use Windows File Explorer to view the folder where the snapshot now resides. And I'm going to double click it, which opens up my new Renaissance masterpiece. Who's the artiste now, huh? Well, your homework assignment is to take a portrait shot of yourself and use this little trick to create a video of the one portrait image. Then use the plugin to create an artistic video. Then use the snapshot tool to create just one really living masterpiece of yourself. You can then run down to your nearest Walmart and get an 8x10 made. Your friends will be jealous and ask you, how the heck did you do that? It'll be our little secret. If you've hung around long enough on this tutorial, I hope you learned a new trick or two. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. As always, I thank each of you for taking the time to watch. I'll see you on the next one.